Ukraine has seen an outpouring of support from around the world as it tries to fend off the Russian invasion. Some of that outpouring has come in the form of cryptocurrency donations. Let's talk more about this uh, with Alex Bornikov, who is the Deputy Ukrainian Minister of Digital Transformation and joins us from Ukraine. Yellow Finance's cryptocurrency reporter David Hollerith is here as well. Alex, uh, good to see you uh, this, this morning. Thanks for hopping on with us. Before we even get to the cryptocurrency uh, donations here and what uh, things are happening there on that front. Just can you explain to us what you're seeing on the ground in, in your area at the moment right now? Well, uh, well, hi everyone. Um, well, um, at first, when it all started, I was in Kiev, and um, from the first day, they're starting to uh, fire rockets, and there was like series of explosions. So we were, uh, as a ministry, we were uh, evacuated. Unfortunately, I can't give you the exact location. But even where we are uh, right now, there are sometimes a sirens and we have to go to the shelter from time to time. Um, but we are in a relatively safe environment at, the, at this point. Hi, Alex. Uh, the Ukrainian government has received almost $60 million in cryptocurrency donations, and as far as the latest goes. Um, and you've already spent some of that money, um, some of the donations on military su supplies and relief efforts. So I was sort of wondering, of course, uh, your country has and will receive donations from uh, NATO countries, and those, dona those donations of funds will be much larger. But I'm curious, what role are you seeing cryptocurrency play during this conflict? Well, um, I think that in the times like that, uh, response time is, is, is crucial. So the fiat currencies and the fiat funds that uh, exist and in the first day of war, National Bank of Ukraine, uh, of Ukraine created a fiat fund, but with their time and the speed of uh, regular, like a banking system, it was impossible to uh, sort of like finance uh, um, important things for the army. So I think their um, crypto, playing a role to uh, give this flexibility in, in, in when it's really needed to respond really quickly to deliver the army with their uh, required supply. Um, Deputy Minister, it's Julie here. And, and first, I do want to acknowledge, obviously, the duress that you all are under um, and, and our, our wishes for you and your family's safety um, at this time. Um, when it comes to using the cryptocurrency donations you receive, can you describe to us a little bit about how the process works? Do you have to convert all of it to fiat? Are some of your suppliers accepting cryptocurrency? In other words, is it does the cryptocurrency receiving the donations in that way, does it increase the friction at all in terms of how you're able to use it? Well, uh, the, the, in general, like uh, the, the fund works uh, in... Uh, uh, in the mode of the public-private uh, partnership, so we partnered with a, a private exchange, uh, which help us dealing with the security matters, uh, with exchange matters, um, and um, because we don't want our money to be so, uh, like stolen or we don't want to lose access, so there's a certain infrastructure has to be built in order to such fund to operate. Um, and uh, when the Minister of Defense formed a request, it's basically. Um, uh, uh, companies that deliver those goods, and some of them accept crypto, some of them did not uh, or don't accept crypto at all. So it, when it's when they're accepting, we just exchange in with the with the wallets IDs and 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 make those transfer. When it's uh, if it's impossible, then uh, exchanges convert those money and send over a banking system. And Alex, uh, last week, the Ukraine's uh, official Twitter account had said that uh, they would reward crypt, uh, crypto donations with some sort of airdrop. And it sounds like that's been pushed back. And it certainly doesn't seem like the government's top wartime priority. And with that understanding, I was sort of curious if you could tell us more about what's going on with that program at this point. Well, um, well, in the first place, uh, there was an initiative to uh, like increase awareness, but when we then we realized that in this time, like it was very hectic, and uh, it's actually there were a lot of people that just donated like a very small amount, and they just wanted to get rewarded. So, but this fund, you know, the Ukraine is suffering right now, and I don't think it's time to 
uh, take profits and, and just use airdrop as a, as a means of uh, uh, as a means of profit. So we decided to decline it. But one one of the major thing actually was like a technical preparations. We realized that this is almost impossible. Well, um, maybe it's going to be airdrop at some point. But right now, um, Russia is very active in their military actions. So we need to focus ourselves on defending a country rather than. Uh, going further, further with the airdrop. Alex, for those that don't have your, uh, you know, extensive knowledge in this space, is there a way for Russia to be cut off from the crypto markets? Uh, because a lot of stories and a lot of focus right now is on how they might be using crypto markets to evade some of these Western sanctions. Well, yeah, that's that's actually a very good question, and we started to work towards this direction, trying to. Uh, 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 tell major changes that is it's it's unacceptable to work with Russia at this point because they use this money to kill civilian people to invade um, free country and without any reason and um, and put their puppet government and whatever so uh, children dying and 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 people dying and they and so we um, we inform those exchanges with official letters with with calls with where we can reach uh, to whom we can reach out to stop a work with russia uh, because those are blood money and in many cases those money uh, comes from corruption so at this point some of the exchanges uh, went out so can they, they stopped the operation with russia some of them limited uh, and uh, what what is definitely going on that there's a huge sanction list uh, of thousands of people and related to those people who were blocked already. And we know that they're blocked uh, because I saw in, a, in social media that they're complaining. Uh, so this is what's definitely going on. All, all the major exchanges responded with uh, for, the, for that request. And uh, I think that's a small step, but, it, it's, it, but, the, but the ball is slowly moving. And um, I think that after some time, more and bringing more and more awareness to this issue, more and more exchanges are going to get out from Russia. And, and that also brings up another question when you talk about social media and getting awareness out. Um, it seems as though your leadership has been really active when it comes to social media, to getting the word out, to letting people know what's happening on the ground there. And I'm curious how deliberate a strategy that has been um, or whether it just sort of happened organically as, as this conflict is unfolding? Well, you, you can't build a strategy uh, like before. Because no one actually, well, there were some rumors, but no one really expected they, um, they, 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 they will go all in for uh, like invading Ukraine from all these angles and, and bomb, bombing civil cities and uh, rocketing and shelling. So um, many things is just to respond to uh, to this pain that we have seen our nation suffering. So we decided to fight back, and um, uh, the, we think that uh, Russian people deserve to know uh, that their government actions in 21st century for European country is unacceptable. And they live in some sort of a bubble, information bubble. Uh, and I think the more we push economically, the more they uh, understand that there's something is wrong. So they start asking questions to their government, why we uh, became, became so poor or are we losing money and we're losing, and all the world hate us. So eventually, uh, we think that the strategy is to to make everyone in, in Russia realize that uh, you can just support uh, a war in 21st century. Um, we really appreciate you taking the time to speak to us. Obviously, in what is a very difficult situation for yourself, for your nation. Um, thank you so much for giving us some insight into what you all are doing. Alex Bornyakov is the Deputy Ukrainian Minister of Digital Transformation. Stay safe. Um, and may all of Ukrainians stay safe for that matter. Thank you so much. Our David Holler joining for this conversation as well.